Hey everybody. Yesterday I shot a video about an experiment I had done where I tried to instantly or at least rapidly cycle a tank. And I was checking for nitrites along the way to sort of monitor the progress of this experiment. And I got some really unusual results. And so I posted a video yesterday and talked about those unusual results and why I didn't really understand what I was seeing. And I got a lot of good comments and a lot of interesting feedback. And I had a couple of people actually answer my question, what was puzzling me. So we're gonna talk about all that today because there's a lot to go over. Uh, first of all, let's just address what was the issue. Um, I saw basically no nitrites for an entire week and I was expecting nitrites to develop along the way during this process and I never saw any really. And suddenly the process was done, the tank was cycled and I never really saw nitrites develop along the way. And I was really, really curious as to why that was. And the reason was is because I was conflating or I was confusing the way these two processes work. There's the natural process by which a tank will cycle itself. If you just set up a tank and let it run and put some food or some ammonia or something in the tank or some, you know, some product that's going to break down and turn into ammonia, the bacteria is just ubiquitous. It's in the air. And so ultimately, once there's a food source in the tank and some of that bacteria gets in there, it will eat you know, eat that ammonia and begin growing and developing and so on and so forth. And eventually you will start getting a buildup of nitrite in the tank. And likewise, once there's enough nitrite available in the water, this sort of naturally occurring bacteria will then be able to survive in those conditions because there's an available food source or energy source. And then the bacteria that eats the nitrite will begin to develop. And then gradually that nitrite level will start to come down and you'll see the nitrates start to go up. And that's the sort of progression of the natural cycle. And this can take six weeks or whatever if you just let it go naturally. Now, I was expecting that to happen over this really sort of condensed period of time. And where I went wrong, and I even touched on this when I talked about it, I was so close, but I still missed it. And it's the fact that I put the bacteria in the tank that eats the nitrite right from day one. It went in at the same time that the ammonia eating nitrite or the ammonia eating bacteria went in there. So while the ammonia eating bacteria was eating the ammonia and producing nitrite, the nitrite was being eaten at essentially the same rate that the ammonia was being eaten. So it was going from ammonia to nitrite to nitrate. Like there was no real time where it was staying in the tank as nitrite. It never built up. It just immediately got converted to nitrate. So what I should have done for this experiment was tested the starting level of both the ammonia and the nitrate and then checked those parameters. And of course, I could have checked the nitrate along the way, just more information is always better. But checking the ammonia and the nitrate to see what I started with and how quickly that nitrate starts going up, that would have been the correct way of doing that experiment. And so we're going to do that experiment again. I actually went out and got some stuff today. I got an old tank in the other room we're going to set up. So that's going to be a video. We're going to watch this whole process unfold and we're going to check different parameters this time. So that'll be coming up. Make sure you're subscribed. You don't want to miss that. Furthermore, uh, I had a lot of people comment about ways that I could have prepared my quarantine tank to get it ready pretty much immediately for uh, fish to go in it. And those are good suggestions. If my goal had been to simply, I've got to get this tank ready because I'm bringing fish home and I need to get it set up now. Um, the, the goal that I would have, the way I could have done that was simply to take a, um, instead of taking the bio media from another tank and swishing it around in the water like I did, I simply could have taken that bio filter and put it in the filter in this tank and it would have just had a cycled biofilter in it. Uh, other people suggested I could keep a small sponge filter running in another tank and then if I ever needed to set up my quarantine tank I could simply grab that sponge filter out of an established tank and just put it in there and now I've got my little bubbling sponge filter all sort of pre-cycled and those are great ideas for ways that you can sort of instantly prepare a tank for uh, quarantine purposes or whatever. That's not what I was trying to do though. What I was trying to do was instantly, I'm using that term loosely, rapidly cycle that tank. 
So when I think of cycling a tank, and I'm going to get a bit pedantic here, but cycling a tank would be taking something that is uncycled, a brand new filter, and getting that filter to have a functioning cycle. In other words, if I've just set up a tank that's not going to be some temporary quarantine tank or something, I need to get this tank established because fish are in it now. What is going to be the best way to get that filter established? Putting a new, putting an established filter on the, t that's not cycling in a filter. That's taking a filter that's already cycled and just slapping it on the tank. Likewise with a sponge filter. If I simply put a sponge filter in the tank, that's not cycling that tank in. That's putting a cycled filter in a tank. What I'm trying to do here with these experiments is find out what happens when you do the most common way that people are going to do this. I'm thinking of the scenario that is all too common where people bring fish home, they got their first tank set up, the guy at the fish store told them to put a little prime in your tank and you're good to go. And now they're suddenly finding out there's a thing called an, a cycle and they got to, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And the most common way people can rapidly get that new filter and all that set up is either by taking a filter out of their other 10 gallon tank or something and swishing it around in the water or getting a bag of aquarium squeezings, you know, filter squeezings from the aquarium store, which is essentially the same thing. It's them swishing a filter or squeezing a filter into a bag and then you pour that water into the tank. That's just loading the tank up with that bacteria. Not all of it's going to survive, but you're basically spiking the tank with bacteria and now it's going to swirl around and establish and get in the filter and attach to the glass or whatever it's going to do. And that tank that was previously completely uncycled is now going to rapidly develop the cycle because you've added this bacteria. That's the most common way of doing it. Most fish keepers don't you know, that are, that are trying to get a new tank established don't have a spare filter they can just use from another tank. They might be able to swish the filter around in it, but you that's the filter that belongs on that tank. They got to keep that filter in that tank. They don't just have extra, you know, not everybody does this, you know, with the big fish room and all that kind of stuff. Most people have a tank or two, and this is the most likely real world scenario that I see. And I just want to find out how it works. We know it works. We know you can really rapidly cycle a tank. And I just want to see the process unfold, and I think it would be a good idea to do that all on video. So new fish keepers, beginning fish keepers that don't know how this process works or just want to learn more about it can actually see it unfold. And so that's what we're going to do. Again, I got a new filter today. I got an old tank in the other room we're going to set up and, you know, blah, blah, blah. We'll do all that in the other video. I'll set up all the parameters, how we're going to do it and everything else. So make sure you're subscribed. You don't want to miss that or anything else. You can always check out my Patreon if you're interested. I do behind the scenes stuff and talk about ideas I got coming up and that kind of stuff over there, plus miscellaneous other stuff. You'll see if you go over there and check that out. Um, let me know what you think about my ideas, any other questions, comments about what I was saying about rapidly cycling the tank and the different ways of doing it, so on and so forth. Any comments are always appreciated. I always try to read everything. So again, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like. I'll see you on the next one.